So basically, in this this introduction, I I, I take a lot from the Declaration of Independence and saying, um, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for fans and wrestlers alike to dissolve the wrestling company which reigns supreme and the wrestling company that assumes a fiefdom over its fans and talent, or most over its talent, a decent respect to the opinion of mankind requires that they should explain the causes which makes them rebel. (laughs) So... So sorry, uh, Martin, for my butchering. Martin's <laughs> going to destroy the WWE. <laughs> well, think about it, though. I see Vince and Kennedy McMahon as the mad tyrant King George III. Think about it. He's mad, just like him. <laughs> what, was King George III actually supposed, you know, like as crazy bunkers as people said he was? Or was that like an American propaganda thing? I'm not sure, but uh, for our purposes, let's assume he is. <laughs> okay. No, I, no, but seriously, I, I don't, I don't know. All right, continue. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but actually, that's a good question. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, so I'm boycotting the WWE, and you should too. Um, and here are my reasons. Here's my thesis, if you will. Why continue to support a company that works for and propagandizes? For a murderous country like Saudi Arabia, where human rights is an anathema? Mm. Um, Why support a company that regularly insults its fans and talent alike, treating them as disposable objects? True. Why support a company whose actions are textbook examples of the despicable evil of greed? And uh, so I basically break this down into three main reasons, at least for the reason why I'm boycotting WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, um, at least well we'll talk about when my boycott will end uh, so first of all WWE's relationship with Saudi Arabia um, <laughs> this is quite inflammatory um, and I don't mean any offense to any of our Muslim brothers and sisters out there mm-hmm. um, but when the WWE you know gives a show to Saudi Arabia all I can really think of is when Jesus in the Bible said, um, do not give what is holy to dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample uh, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. Well, so, the, <laughs> the good news for you anyway is that less than 100% of our listeners on Anchor is from the UAE and not Saudi Arabia, so you should be fine. <laughs> No, no, what I'm trying to say is that... I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm trying to insult the Saudi Arabian government. Right. The murderous regime. And I'm calling them what probably is most offensive to them, other than like a gay person, swine. A gay, do- a gay, a gay dog pig. <laughs> a gay pig. Gay pigs. I like gay dog pig better. Nothing against Saudi Arabian people. I'm sure there are good people there who don't like the actions of their government. Um, So this is nothing against you. And of course, nothing against our Muslim brothers and sisters out there. And if you are Muslim out there, um, I don't think I don't think you will be supporting Saudi Arabia's version of Islam. I don't think 99 percent of Muslims, whatever percent of Muslims outside of Saudi Arabia, which is probably 99 percent, do not care what we have to say about Saudi Arabia. (laughs) It don't matter, yo. I'm inflammatory. I want to be Hannibal Barca. Are you going to <laughs> take a bunch of elephants and cross them into Jeddah? <laughs> yeah, I am. But the problem, though, is, um, as I explained here in the writing, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in my opinion, is an abomination to mankind, which is a travesty because it holds the cities of Medina and Mecca. Those are the city, the holy cities in Islam, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, they so are. That's, that's so sad, man. Yeah, it's like, damn, two some of the holiest places in Islam are held by a pariah state. Yeah, by by yeah, and so the Saudi government, you know, they run their country like how Stalin ran the Soviet Union, albeit with religion. Um, so the crimes of this repugnant regime will fill an entire library. Um. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners out there know about some of these crimes. I mean, you know, their anti-Semitism, their sex, their anti-LGBT, very like 
there's anti LGBT and there's just completely murdering LGBT. I mean, people. The only LGBTQ people. The only thing objectively worse is their anti gamer stance in Saudi Arabia. I think that's actually the absolute worst oppression. Holy crap! What's about that? I didn't know that. <laughs> Nothing. I fucking made that up. Oh, oh, they're <laughs> gamers. Gamers are the most oppressed group in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> like because they're all gay. Yeah, homosexuals <laughs> are second. Women are third. Gay homosexual women are <laughs> gay homosexual women are fourth. Gamers are the number one most oppressed in all Saudi Arabia, just like everywhere else in the world. Yeah. So. I'm sure you all out there know about the evils of Saudi Arabia. So what is where does the WWE come in this involved in this? What's going on? So despite this stellar track record of evil, WWE has decided to do business with these pigs. And why? You know? What about your Jewish women and LGBTQ employees? What about the moral objections of your employees? But the only thing that matters to the WWE is money. So they can inflate their stock price. Make that money move. And according to the, well, according to WrestleNomics, WWE receives $50 million every time it stages, stages a show in Saudi Arabia. And these are paid shows. And that means that the ticket sales don't influence how much money is made. Mm -hmm. And so the WWE, to put this in perspective, these shows have made more money for WWE so far than ticket sales from all 36 WrestleManias combined. Oof. <laughs> that WrestleManias, <laughs> for all of you who are not wrestling aficionados, WrestleManias are like the wrestling events of the year. Like yeah. throughout the entire wrestling year, like the peak is always WrestleMania. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the culmination of their year. And um, it's been... And these shows, man, these WrestleMania shows, they're in stadiums. Like, I think the, the newest... I think the, the next WrestleMania coming up in, uh, what, three, two, three months is going to be in uh, Dallas, uh, the AT&T Stadium, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. There's actually going to be another one in February here in Columbus, actually. Oh, okay. Um, and so the Saudi government thus far, as of when we're talking, has paid the WWE $250 million for five shows. And that's more than all the ticket sales from all 36 WrestleManias combined. And I think the WWE right now has a 10-year deal with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Jesus. Now, here's the thing, too. If you think this is all for money... So to think that all this money is for the purpose of, quote, sports entertainment, unquote, because the WWE never wants to call their product professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. If you think it's all for, quote, sports, sports entertainment, unquote, part of this deal involves the WWE blatantly propagandizing for Saudi Arabia. Mm. Check this out. Look no further than the WWE's first ever show in Saudi Arabia, Greatest Royal Rumble, on all, on April 27, 2018. Yeah, that's the not... Video, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, that's... I, at first, I was mistaking that for the Crown Jewel event that they had in Saudi Arabia. Wasn't that, like, a different one? No, no, it's a different one, because I believe under okay. the current contract they have with Saudi Arabia, they have to have two shows every year. Oh, Jesus. Two shows, huh? Yeah. And so, it, so propagandizing for the uh, WWE's first ever show, Greatest Royal Rumble, in 2018, April, the videos played during the program of women driving, of men dancing on the sidewalks, of tourist destinations, etc. Mm -hmm. They showed videos of all that. And one of the announcers for WWE, Michael Cole, look <laughs> at what he called Jeddah. He called the city of Jeddah vibrant progressive city <laughs> okay i will you can maybe say jeddah is vibrant but not progressive 
I'm, I'm like, who's telling these people to do, write these things? I mean, is this like a Vince McMahon directive telling him to, yeah, go out there and uh, blow the city tonight, you know? <laughs> the the tolerant, progressive, liberal city of Jeddah. <laughs> and you got, and on the same show, you got John Cena thanking the king of Saudi Arabia. Like, thank him for what? For killing a gay person that day? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the what murder the of Jamal Khashoggi? <laughs> Yeah, and that didn't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that happened yet that time. But uh, was any. So think about this. Was any of this necessary for a mere sports event? Like, what did it, anything have to do with their event? Right. So nothing, of course, because the Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabian regime, they don't care one photo about professional wrestling. The WWE is just playing the role of the useful idiot. The Saudi government would not be paying them if it wasn't in their own interest. And their goal is not to, and their goal, the Saudi Arabian government's goal is to use the WWE to promote a false image of Saudi Arabia, to spread the lie that Saudi Arabia is a great place to, a great place to live, that Saudi Arabia is quote unquote progressive. <laughs> I w the only counter I might actually add to this, and it's actually a bit of a more malevolent spin or more cynical spin, given your perspective. Oh no, go ahead, man. So... You say WWE is playing the role of the useful idiot, which is obviously possible. Like, I definitely do not disagree that this is one of the goals of what Saudi Arabia is using the WWE for. I think the WWE is not playing the idiot here. I think they're playing complicit. <laughs> knowing, conspira oh, okay. knowing conspirator. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, from the perspective of WWE, this is a business. This is a business decision, right? So, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, and their stock, and their and their stockholders love it. Yeah, they know <laughs> that this would make Saudi Arabia look good, or at least they think it would. Uh, like, so, so for them, they might see this as a win-win. For all we know, I mean, it's impossible to kind of speculate what's floating around in the minds of guys like Vince McMahon or yeah. other WWE execs. But I think that's another one to consider too. And it's actually much worse <laughs> because let's t let's let's create a hypothetical scenario here, if you will. So let's say the Taliban, right? Currently, the government in charge of Afghanistan. Let's say they had Saudi money. OK, let's say they struck it rich. They exploited a bunch of natural minerals and they're as rich as Saudi Arabia. They have the money and they start like developing these big stadiums and shit like that. So they also approached the WWE with the same intentions, right? So, oh, yeah. like, the Taliban and the Saudi state aren't all that different in terms of, like, the human rights abuses they commit mm. daily, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think the WWE would accept money from the Taliban? Pro maybe, actually. Because remember, fucking remember, all how many of the uh, hijackers uh, from the seven uh, September eleventh hijackings? You know, the twin towers. Um, I believe how many of them four. came from Saudi? Some of those were, and you actually listed. You said 19, 19 hijackers involved in the nine eleven terror attacks were Saudis. Or oh, wait, fifteen out of nineteen. Yeah, fifteen out of nineteen were Saudis. Yeah. Yeah. So good enough time, who's to say that WWE would not do the same thing in this scenario? If the no, money... I, think they, I think the WWE would. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, would that's my create point. a business deal with Taliban because they probably would use the excuse, well, the United States negotiated with the Taliban. So, yeah, let's put on a show for them if the mm. money's right. Yeah. Yeah. Talibucks. They got the Talibucks. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Lest we pick on Saudi Arabia too much, though, the WWE creative and management, which ultimately is led by Vince McMahon, he makes the final decisions. The WWE creative and management needs to be held accountable as well. They are either, I write here, they're either tone deaf or completely sociopathic. So why do I say this? To illustrate this, though, I'm sure everybody out there knows the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Um, Saudi journalist. Yeah, Saudi journalist who was murdered in the Saudi embassy of Turkey. Mm -hmm. 
um, by Saudi officials for what was his crime? Well, he just spoke out against the regime. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a crime to speak out. You know, they don't have First Amendment rights over there. It's a crime. Not and only did they murder Khashoggi. <laughs> they murdered that man in another fucking country, too. Well, well, not only did they kill him, they chop, they, they sawed his body parts. They fucking... Dismembered him. Yeah. Carried his body parts out in suitcases. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh, this is a regime that... So anyway, no, knowing this... Let's take a look at WWE's most recent event held in Saudi Arabia, WWE Crown Jewel 2021, mm -hmm. held in October 21st, 2021. And this was held in the city of, if I'm saying this right, Riyadh, Saudi Riyadh. Arabia? Riyadh. Okay. So this tone deafness, or maybe just a lack of empathy, really is on display here in the Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley match. So, in the build-up to this match, which would take place in Saudi Arabia, Goldberg threatened in promos leading up to the match that he would kill Bobby Lashley. For example, on, on the October 4th, uh, 2021 edition of Raw, Lashley informed Goldberg that their match at Crown Jewel would be no holds barred, mm -hmm. which means, for you non-wrestling fans, everything's legal. No DQ. Goldberg's response... This gives me a license to kill. <laughs> so I'm going to kill you in Saudi Arabia, right? <laughs> in well, a country where the government kills its own people for quote-unquote crimes such as being gay. Wait, does, does he actually say this entire state, statement? What? what? Quoted, this gives me a license to kill. You can find on WWE, the WWE's YouTube channel. Ah, Honestly. okay, okay, I see. Yeah. On, on October 4th, 2021 edition of Raw. Like, it couldn't be more tone deaf unless he pulled out, like, a scimitar or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, like, pulled out, like, a like a dummy or whatever. It's like, this is what I'm going to do to you, Bobby Lashley, when we be in the ring. <laughs> I mean, it, like, who's writing this? Who's approving this? Because, you know, for WWE, everything is scripted. Everything. I mean... That's one of the biggest knocks against the current WWE product is that a group of writers are scripting what the wrestlers say, which historically, you know, didn't happen in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and Vince, of course, Vince McMahon has final say over all of it. Yeah. Like, it, like how disrespectful is that to all the victims of the Saudi Arabian regime? regime? <laughs> No shit, it's, even if it wasn't intentional, it's, I mean, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't, it's still fucking tone deaf. Like, yeah. people die fairly regularly in Saudi Arabia. Like, I'm going to go Google some stats while I'm, while you keep Please going. Please do, brother. Yeah. And so, yeah, while you Google that, let's go back to that Crown Jewel 2021 show. The show itself began with a cold open video package, which means you just started with the video package that utters these words, a place that brings out the best for all to see. Hmm. The best for all to see, huh? What does that even mean? Like, was this necessary? Like to blow the Saudi or government like this? Was this necessary? Like, and what is happening? <laughs> just going off some numbers here. I don't know how valid these numbers are, so be keep that in mind. Well, what are your, what's your source? Uh, this is from Al Jazeera. Oh, okay. I, I, I was just kind of curious, how many people does Saudi Arabia execute per year? And I'm like, do they keep accurate numbers that they just publish for like, for like, uh, I don't know, BuzzFeed or some shit to pick up on? So I was looking at Saudi Arabia from, this is Al Jazeera, ramped up executions in first half of 2021, according to a uh, Amnesty International report here. Ramped up executions in the first half of 2021, following a drop during its G20 presidency in 2020, according to the UK-based rights group Amnesty International. The rights group said on Tuesday that the kingdom executed at least 40 people 
between January and July of 2021, more than during the whole of last year. Although Saudi Arabia executed a record of 185 people in 2019, the state-backed Human Rights Commission state said in January that the kingdom had reduced the number of executions by 85% in 2020, compared with the previous year, putting the number for 2020 at 27. Amnesty said executions had resumed immediately after Saudi Arabia handed over the presidency of the group of rich 20 nations to Italy, with nine people executed in December 2020 alone. Damn, as soon as they got done with that whole human rights bullshit, <laughs> it's like, well, all right. And for me, right, I, I'm like, I'm not even offended that they execute people. I'm, I'm offended that what they execute people for, and also their, it says here, quoting in the Al Jazeera article, um, entitled Saudi Arabia ramped up executions in first half of 2021, according to Amnesty. Um, I'm more offended by, you know, what are these people being executed for? And also the, quote, grossly unfair trials, unquote, and the torture and all of those things. Because, I mean, I'll just say it here. I'm not going to put a mask on with this. Um, I don't mind death penalty when it comes to things like oh you murdered a ch you you you're a serial killer we're gonna kill you or you you're a child rapist we're gonna kill you i don't mind that see this but, is actually where you and i have legit disagreement for once <laughs> i'm actually yeah. against the death penalty period but i i can understand where you're coming from anyway not to get too off topic yeah that's maybe something, yeah, we can discuss too. So my biggest beef with that, with the Saudi Arabia's executions, is what they're, the process and what they're being executed for. Like, like the, your sexuality something you have nothing no, to do. Something you have yeah. no control over. Uh, being accused of stupid bullshit too, like witchcraft by your neighbor or whatever. I don't, yeah. I don't know how mm. many people legit get executed for that. Um, being a dissenter in Saudi Arabia can get you fucking in prison at the very yeah, least. That, yeah, that's, yeah. So like, I mean, there's your life. That's a that's a theoretical. That's a metaphorical execution right there. Yeah. Like, oh, I spoke out against my government, and I'm in prison for the rest of my life. I, that's not right, man. I mean, I don't know if they go to prison for the rest of their life, but still, you shouldn't go to prison for that. Yeah. It, like, why do business with these pigs? Yeah, and I'm calling you pig, pig. If the shoe fits, wear that motherfucker and walk in it. Damn, that will never be able to get played on a Saudi Arabian podcast. <laughs> Damn, they'll never. They're going to block us now. Oh, fuck. All 0% of our Saudi viewership is going to remain zero forever. Well, uh, and, and for the rest of the Saudi Arabian part portion of the uh, of, of what I wrote, yeah. you could, I mean, I'm going to link this with the YouTube channel and stuff like that. So... You can read it there, but but just tone deafness. Like like look at just one example, the Seth Rollins versus Edge match at that Crown Jewel 2021. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> check this out. Seth tries to stab Edge in the eye. There are multiple chair shots, multiple ta so the the violence is just over the top. Like this is professional wrestling. Why are you over the top with your violence? Like, well, I'm mean, trying to stab people in the eye. Like. The other things sound like normal wrestling shit to me, you know, like multi chair shots, tables, and all that. The stabbing in the eye thing? What, yeah. hap what happened in that? What was prob That probably has something to do with Seth, Seth Rollins versus um, Rey Mysterio Jr. in 2000, I believe, 20, in 2020, where there was a literal eye for eye match in which Rey Mysterio's eye came out and he lost the match. And I, and I say this too. Uh, Ray Mysterio's eye didn't literally come out. This is professional wrestling. They're working us. But <laughs> but yeah, so that's probably why. So Seth Rollins is now probably trying to take out the eyes of his opponents. Literally. Yeah. I, I was going to be like, I'm like, what the fuck happened? Ray Mysterio's eye came out? What the fuck? <laughs> that's so sadistic, even for WWE. Well, no, they tried to show it too on that, on the, on the, 
the event, the pay-per-view, I guess you could call it, but it looks so fake. It's like, obviously, that's fucking fake, bro. Like, like, like you may be thinking it's professional wrestling. Yeah, but don't insult me, and we'll get to that. Okay. Don't insult my fucking intelligence while I'm watching your product, trying to live in a world of make-believe. Like, don't insult my intelligence, you fucking idiot, McMahon. Yeah, give me the wrestler who fights and wrestles with his hands in pockets again, though. My oh, well, that's guy. another situation. <laughs> but uh, speaking also of the Saudi Arabian thing, too, I also write about two uh, women wrestling there. Um, you know, on the first couple of shows, women weren't even allowed to wrestle there. Oh, that's right. right. I remember yeah. that. So I'm like, so, but now... Uh, six women actually wrestled on the Crown Jewel 2021 show, but still, these women weren't allowed to be themselves, at least their physical appearance, because they had to wear these um, pajamas, I guess you can call them, or they had to wear a t-shirt and they had to ha cover up literally their whole thing, except for like their, I don't, except for like their head. So I'm like, why, why do this for a country that doesn't accept you the way you are? Why? Why are you doing this? I have to see this too. Was it the Lacey Evans and Natalia? Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Came the first ever women to wrestle a WWE Lacey match. Evans. I don't. No, Lacey Evans is pregnant, or she had a baby recently. Oh, this was so she wasn't at the twenty twenty. This the is Crown a, Jewel twenty twenty one show. This is twenty nineteen. This is that one. Yeah. Go to more recent. Go to Crown uh, Jewel. 2021 um and then put in put in becky lynch becky. the last kicker uh go to images and and uh yeah so that's what they wrestled as so there's a triple threat match uh between three great athletes three great three phenomenal wrestlers um and look what they were wearing man i'm trying to find it like Let's i don't see. like I don't, I'm not big on like clothes and, sorry, that sounded wrong. <laughs> sorry. I'm not, I'm not big on clothes, yo. What I mean to say is like, you should dress the way you want to dress. Like, you shouldn't be forced by the country to say, oh, well, you know, your usual ring attire, which you spent a gazillion dollars on. Well, you can't wear that here because we have, we have a, we have an irrational fetish or we have an irrational view about women that was played out two centuries ago, or two, yeah, two centuries ago. Like, come on, man. What the fuck's wrong with you? Like, why do business with these pigs? All for the money. Money, money. It's the profit motive, baby. Oh, gosh. So, um, and again, I'm not criticizing the wrestlers here. I'm just, I'm criticizing the simulation of over the top violence in a country whose government commits over the top violence on a daily basis. So, so yeah. that's why, um, so that's my whole Saudi in the interest of time. That's my whole Saudi Arabian shtick. Um, yeah. Anything to say about that before we move on? Uh, no, I think it's very funny though, that they are obviously cool with one guy pretending to try to gouge another guy's eyeball out in a, yeah. in a match but women wearing their normal wrestling costumes yes. was just over the line that is yes. violating the, that's violating the morality of the saudi preach. nation <laughs> preach yeah exactly it's like yeah. okay is, we we draw the line at like fake eyeball <laughs> stabbing <laughs> <laughs> or or like in WWE as well they don't even show like blood on their television program like it, like if a talent gets like blood it's not on purpose anymore cuz for those of you who don't know for professional wrestling um wrestlers before the WWE went PG and for the history of the wrestling business in the I think from the 70s on although I'm not don't quote me on that um, getting blood was seen as a way to like increase the intensity of the match, but uh, for example, Goldberg in that same show cut Lashley's arm badly accidentally, and the cameras didn't try to pay attention to it because, like, oh, we're we're PG here at WWE, we can't show blood. So the, the hypocrisy is just weird. Gratuitous is, violence is a okay. <laughs> what is happening here?
It's like they could have scripted, you know, like Goldberg with a fucking katana, like ready to like stab yeah. Bobby Lashley in the chest. And that would have been okay. Like Bobby Lashley could have been winging like a fucking hammer to bash in Goldberg's skull. That would have been fine. Yeah, brains flying everywhere, but no blood. <laughs> it's like, it could be literal fucking Mortal Kombat going on in the ring, and that's a-okay, but woman showing skin no dude wwe is so afraid of offending sponsors and getting bad press mm -hmm. ironically right that they're afraid to even fart 